Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking through my top 10 productivity apps for the iPad. Let's get into it. Number 10 on the list, we've got the app Unread. Now Unread is an RSS feed reader for the iPad. What is an RSS feed? Well, if you follow blogs like I do, then they all have this thing called an RSS feed attached to them. And if you want, you can subscribe to the RSS feed for the blog. It's sort of like subscribing to their email newsletter. And so anytime a new blog post gets released on the blog, you get like an update in your RSS feed. This is good because you can use an app called Feedly, like I do, to subscribe to these RSS feeds. And then you can use the app Unread on the iPad or Reader on macOS and on iPhone to then read your Feedly stuff. So basically what this means is that any blog that I like, I can, I, it's like I'm getting a daily digest of all of the stuff that they're publishing. One of the cool things about Feedly is that you can categorize the blogs that you're subscribed to into different categories. So I've got creator, design, doctors, fans, friends, management, ethics, minimalism, newsletters, product, productivity. And then if you click on one of those categories, you can see updates from all the blogs that you follow. So for example, on Cal Newport's blog, Study Hacks, we've got David Melinkoff's Productivity, Productive Lack of Productivity, which is a blog post that I can read. And then when I'm done with it, I can just swipe up and it'll take me to the next one. And this is on Tim Ferriss, or I can swipe to the side, and then I can just kind of go through and decide which blog posts I actually want to read. And this is a great way of keeping in touch with the blogs that I want to follow without my email inbox being inundated by subscribing to their newsletters. The other cool thing about Unread is that if you're on a blog post and you don't want to read it right now, I can swipe to the side, and that gives me the option to read it later, or as I prefer to do, to share it into another app, which is Instapaper. And Instapaper is my ninth favorite productivity app for the iPad, because Instapaper is a great read it later app. So essentially, any, any time I stumble across an article on the internet or in my email or on, on Red on the iPad, I just use the iOS share feature to share it into Instapaper. Now this is really useful because now on Instapaper, I have a digest of everything that I have saved onto it. So usually if I come across an article on the internet, it's when I'm procrastinating from doing something. And I find that this improves my productivity because then I'm not wasting time reading the article if I actually don't want to read it. I just save it into Instapaper and I know it's going to be there for me when I next actually want to read it. And this is cool because since I've been using Instapaper since June of 2019, I've got all of my highlights for all my different articles saved here on the app. So if I go to the sidebar and I hit notes, it brings up all of the highlights from everything I've read that I've highlighted since the June of 2019. So we've got loads of blog posts here. And so if I want to revisit ideas that I've already saved in the past, I can do it on the app directly. And even better, Instapaper auto syncs with Readwise, which auto syncs to Notion. And so I've got my Instapaper highlights in my Notion database. So if, for example, I click on this article from Ryan Holiday, how does it feel to get everything you wanted? which I read on uh, November the 8th, 2020, I can look through my highlights of the article. And if I want, I can read the full article again, but I've got just my highlights saved here in Notion if I ever need to access them again. In position number eight, we have the app Drafts. Now Drafts is what I use for quick capturing any notes that I need to take on my iPad or on my iPhone or on my Mac or on my Apple Watch. It's very cross-platform. It syncs seamlessly across all these different things. And it's basically just a very quick note-taking app. And I prefer Drafts to any other note-taking app just because of its speed and because it's got an Apple Watch widget, which means if I'm driving or if I'm walking and I want to take a note, I can just tap the widget on the home screen of my Apple Watch. And then I can dictate whatever I want into it as I'm on the go, and then it'll automatically sync up with everything. So if, for example, I'm listening to a book on Audible and I want to sort of take note of something that, that's happened, or if I'm, if I'm listening to a podcast episode and I've got some thoughts on it and I want to write something down, Drafts is my go-to app for this. And ultimately the stuff that I have in my draft inbox ends up being saved either to Notion or to Rome, depending on what personal use case I've got for it. But I find that both Notion and Rome are too slow in terms of quick capture. Everything goes into drafts if I need to take a note of it very quickly, and then it'll go onto one of these other apps, depending on how I'm using it. Moving on to number seven, we have a fantastic app called Shortform, which is what I've started using. I only discovered this a few weeks ago and it's absolutely fantastic. So Shortform gives you really good summaries of loads and loads of popular books. It's sort of like Blinkist, but I think it's a bit better than Blinkist because Blinkist summaries of books are usually quite surface level and you can get through them in like 20 minutes. And, and that's fine if you wanna get through a book in 20 minutes and if you, wanna, if you wanna get these surface level insights. But the thing I like about short form is that the insights are a lot deeper than they are on any other app that I've seen. And so if, for example, I look at the summary for The Righteous Mind by Jonathan Haidt, which was one of my favorite books of 2020, more in that video over there somewhere, all of the books on short form have a very detailed sort of one page summary. So you can get everything in a single page if you want. And the length of the one page summary is very similar to Blinkist's kind of you know, 13 blinks about a book. But the reason I like short form so much is that they also have far more detailed full summaries of every book on their library. And so you've got, you know, every, basically every chapter in the book will have its own detailed summary. 
and they'll have exercises and you can type stuff out for the different exercises if you want to do the exercises yourself. And it's just a generally deeper way of going into a book summary. Now, book summaries are not a substitute for actually reading the book, but given that we all have far too many books on our to be read list, and certainly I do as well, I quite like reading the summary to decide A, if I actually want to read the full book, and often I do, or if I've read a book already, then I'll look at the summary just to remind myself of the highlights. Or in the third case, a lot of books have one central idea and then they just pad out the rest of the book for about 300 pages because then it becomes a book. And in that sense, you don't really need to read the whole book to get the idea, you can just read a summary. So Shortform is a fantastic app for that. I am in the process of trying to get a partnership with them. So if by the time this video out, it's done, there will be an, a link or a coupon or an affiliate link in the video description and you'll get some freebies if you click on it. Maybe it won't, in which case I'll just put a link to the website. So yeah, short form, amazing app for book summaries. Coming in at point number six, we have the to-do list manager Things 3. Now Things 3 is one of my favorite apps for the iPad and for iPhone and I think it's got an Apple Watch widget as well and on Mac mostly because it's just really pretty and nice to use. It's quite expensive and it's iOS only. And to be honest, you don't need a fancy to-do list manager to use to-do list well. In fact, a lot of the time today, I use a paper to-do list. This is the analog to-do list thing by Ugmonk. Link in the video description if you wanna check it out. It's like a cool sort of physical thing and a physical key card. But if I'm using a digital to-do list, then Things 3 is the one that I normally use. And the way Things works is that it splits things up into three different hierarchies. So you've got areas, you've got projects, and then you've got tasks within those. And so the way you can use areas, you could do it like health, people, videos, business, courses, writing. So you could have the different areas of your life. I used to organize my to-do list like that, but these days I tend to just organize it by project uh, in order of priority. And so for example, the book that I'm writing is number one on the list. And as you'll see, I've got these tasks to reach out to various people um, related to the book. I've got this project that I wanna do 30 days of meditation. And I've got areas for my different team members so that I can keep a rough track of what these guys are getting up to. And the reason I like Things 3 is that it just, it's just nicely designed and it's a pleasure to use. And all of the sort of animations and interactions are just like really nice. And when you tick something off, it's a nice sort of, like a nice little animation that ticks it off for you. And it's just um, like the most beautiful to-do list app I've ever used, which is why I like it so much. And it's great because they've got an iPad widget as well. And so I can just click on it and I can see all of the different things that I'm, I'm trying to do today. In position number five, we have the app Notability, which is my favorite way of taking handwritten notes on the iPad Pro. I've got a video up there, which is the one hit wonder that caused my channel to explode called How I Take Notes on My iPad Pro in Medical School. That goes in much more detail about exactly how I use Notability to take handwritten notes. To be honest, these days I don't take a lot of handwritten notes on the iPad. If I'm taking handwritten notes, I use an actual pad, pen and pad or use my analog to-do list thing. But the reason I like Notability is because of its simplicity and because it kind of looks pretty and because of the way that it handles kind of Apple Pencil writing. So one of the issues that I have with good notes is that if you're trying to write with the Apple Pencil, it doesn't quite feel like writing on paper because it, the, it good notes kind of smooths out your pencil strokes, which means you don't, you feel like you're writing on a screen. Whereas the nice thing about Notability is that it genuinely feels like I'm actually writing on paper. And of course, I've got the paper-like screen protector on top of my iPad Pro. I've been using the paper-like screen protector since 2018 and it's never let me down and it's fantastic. So there'll be a link in the video description if you wanna check that out as well. And that is sort of a matte screen protector. That means if I'm writing on the iPad, it genuinely does sort of feel like writing on paper rather than writing on a shiny surface. And the cool thing with Notability is that you can import PDFs and you can annotate stuff and you can highlight things. And it's got like a search feature as well where you can search through your handwritten text, which is kind of cool. And yeah, I've just been using Notability for such a long time. I've got all my medical notes, my obstetrics and gynecology notes, stuff from Six Med, my company, YouTube channel related things, books, random PDFs of books that I've procured on the internet, um, various things related to medicine, various things related to my part-time YouTuber academy. It's basically my go-to place for any handwritten notes that I need to take on the iPad. In position number four, we have the app Procreate. Now you might be wondering, why is this on my list of productivity apps? And the reason it's on my list of productivity apps is because I define productivity as making progress towards the goals that I find meaningful in an efficient way, while having fun along the way. And one of my goals for 2021 is to become a concept artist, i.e. to be able to illustrate scenes from some of my favorite fantasy books. And so with my art teacher, Alessandro, we've been using Procreate because when we're on a Zoom call, I can share my screen on the iPad and I can kind of draw stuff. And so recently, the thing we've been working on is human anatomy. So firstly, I'm doing an online course by Proco, I think, who I'm gonna be interviewing on this channel at some point, an online course about gesture drawing. That'll be linked in the video description if you wanna check it out. And then with my art teacher, Alessandro, we're working on things like human proportions and understanding the underlying anatomy, 
which is a good throwback to first year anatomy revision. And just trying to get to a point where I can competently draw people because like my dream for this concept art is to be able to illustrate a scene from Mistborn, for example, where Kelsier is like riding the winds or, you know, a scene from the Stormlight Archive where Kaladin is holding his spear and all of that needs a good knowledge of being able to draw people. So that's what we've been using Procreate for. At point number three, we have the app Day One, which is what I've been using since like 2014 or something stupid like that as my journaling app of choice. And again, Day One is amazing because it's beautifully designed and it syncs across my Mac, my iPhone and my iPad. And so in my journal journal, I have 251 different entries. Now I don't use Day One as often as I should. So, you know, I'm pretty on and off with my journaling habits. You'll see, see the blue sections here are the ones where I actually did some journaling. So I have periods of doing it quite regularly, periods of not doing it very much at all. Oh, there was a period over here where I did it very regularly, but it's always really nice looking back through my journal from like three, four years ago and being like, oh, you know, what was I thinking? What were my thoughts and feelings back then? And the other cool thing I do with day one is that I've got a special journal for nice comments. And so if I get a really nice heartwarming comment from one of you guys on Instagram or Twitter or YouTube, I screenshot it on my phone usually and I share it into my nice comments journal on day one. And so it was in 2017 that I first started putting myself out there. And you can see these are the pink days where I posted a nice comment into the journal. And the other cool thing about day one is that for each journal, you get a special private email address. And so for example, if I get a nice comment through email, all I have to do is forward the email to my special day one email address, and then it will automatically get added to my nice comments journal. And so that's like a nice frictionless way of putting nice comments into my journal so that if I'm having a bad day, I can read through some of the comments and it can give me a little bit of a lift. Coming in at point number two, we have the Kindle app. Kindle is one of my most used apps on the iPad because even though I have a physical Kindle and I read books on the physical Kindle in bed, often it's easier to take notes from a book and to flick through a book when I'm on my iPad. And so I've got a library with lots and lots of books on Kindle and usually I'm reading them on Kindle, highlighting them when I'm in bed, but if I wanna take notes on them properly, I'll use the app and yeah, it's. It's pretty good. And the really cool thing about the Kindle app is that it works really nicely with split screen. And so if I'm reading through a book to take notes on it or to do a book review of it that I post on my website and email newsletter, I can just sort of flick through the book nicely on the Kindle app on the iPad. And then I can be writing in my notes, usually on Notion using my book notes template. The other cool feature of the Kindle app is that you can see your highlights on Kindle very easily. So it's got the notebook feature, and so with this book, Making of a Manager, I've got loads and loads of highlights and I can flick through them nicely and easily on Kindle. And then I can use those highlights to build my own book notes around in Notion. And that brings us to my number one productivity app for the iPad, which unsurprisingly is Notion itself. No, they are not sponsoring this video, unfortunately. In fact, no one is sponsoring this video. So I hope you guys enjoy the ad-free experience, but I use Notion for almost everything in my life, especially all the stuff that relates to creation and website and YouTube content and ideas and courses and helping my team helping out with things. It's just the ultimate app for everything. So what have we got? Video ideas, my book, Readwise, the part-time YouTuber Academy, my life operating system, sponsored videos, video schedule, team home, projects, task list, SOPs, individual pages, channel hub courses, not overthinking, my podcast, books. And yeah, there's just zillions of things to go over with Notion, but this video has gone on long enough. If you haven't seen how I use Notion for various things, I've put together a short playlist for you over here, which has all of my Notion specific videos about how I use Notion to supercharge my productivity. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.